welcome to part two of Fragile Worlds Colour Along. So I've been doing this polar bear page. This is the front cover of Kirby Roseanne's Fragile World. It will be linked in the description if you want to go and purchase it if you've not already got this copy. My favourite, favourite book ever. So in part one we did um, the main bulk of the polar bear and then I did say that I would do this top bit of my own time with the lighter colour, the base colour that we used for this polar bear I've just used up here. Um, so that's what I've done. So this colour here is just the cobalt green 156. So I went in with um, a light pressure and then I took some darker areas, but it's just this one pencil. Um, I've left the top parts slightly with the white of the paper showing through. That's because I'm going to do um, a snowy effect on the top of these mountains um, right at the end probably because I think I might use acrylic paint. Um, so that's going to be right right at the end but today I'm going to do the polar bears and the seals and if we get any more done bonus but we'll try and get the uh just the polar bear and the seals done for now so I'm going to bring you right in on these polar bears so we're going to have to get in right close aren't we um about there hopefully that'll be okay so when I've looked at a reference picture of polar bears they've, they've got a little bit of grey undertone at the bottom of the legs mainly and the, at the bottom of the body with some like um almost some yellowing in there so i've picked out the green gold um to put a little bit of yellowing in and then i've picked out an ivory so the ivory um i'm gonna sort of burnish with at the end but i'm gonna put a little bit of gray in first so the grey that I'm going to use is the cold grey 233 and just using a really light pressure I'm just going to put a, a little bit in where we've got this darkest grey scale that Kirby's put in I want to leave the bottom bit for the green gold so just a little bit all where it's grey scaled basically but light pressure light pressure you don't want too much because the polar bear isn't grey it's just got this sort of grey bits of grey undertone in there and then on his face a little bit We'll come in with some black detailing to darken up in in the ears, the nose and the eyes at the end. Or near to the end. So that's as much as I'm going to do on that one. I'm going to move on to the second polar bear and just do the same thing. This must be a baby polar bear. It's really a lot smaller than that first one. Or it looks it. Whether it's just because it's set back. Um, I don't know. So has anyone else coloured this page in their copy of Fragile Worlds? And if you have, what colour have you done it? What colour palette have you sort of gone for? There we go. So next I'm going to bring in the green gold 268, is that? 268. And we're going to put a little bit of this round about the areas where we've just put the grey down. So light pressure again the bottom of the feet I think this is probably mainly where you know I don't know I'm not I'm not, I'm not <laughs> well up on the animals but it seems to be the areas where they've got the yellowing is seems to be the parts where they're they're standing or they're laying in the snow or mucky ground for any level of time so you can see that it's darkest at the bottom on the paws there, what I've put in. And then I'm very lightly going to put a little hint, like just barely, so you can barely see anything. I'm going to put in a little hint round and about the grey areas. And again on the second polar bear. Go 
one in with the medium pressure right at the bottom of the feet and then light pressure everywhere else. Oh, snap my pencil. I don't know how because I wasn't pressing very hard then. Medium, medium pressure there. There we go. And now I am going to burnish with the ivory. So everywhere I'm going to go over all of this polar bear with the ivory now. Just going to go over it all. And this is the sort of colour that was on my reference picture because they're not white white polar bears. I'm gonna leave a little section a bit here just under under the chest I'm gonna leave that little bit and bring in some actual white just so it has got some whiteness to it and it's not completely yellowed but I'm just gonna clean this pencil off because it has got a bit of pigment can you see it's got a bit of well it's not zooming in but it's got a bit of blue pigment on there you don't want any of that being blended in. That's an emergency vehicle going past my house. If you're wondering what the noise is. Sirens again. Yeah, so now I'm going to go in with a white 101. Just in the centre there. Blending it all out nicely. And a little bit on the face. Oh, we picked up some ink off the page there. Don't do that. Oh. No. I'm going to get my duster brush just so I don't dirty that often it with my fingers. So back in with the ivory for the second polar bear. So the ivory 103. Going back in on this one. Again, I'm going to leave a little bit that I can put the white into. A little bit here and a little bit around here on the face. So we've got a little bit of highlighting. So now in with a white 101. I'm really zoomed in but it's because these little polar bears are tiny I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so now I'm gonna go in with a instead of a black black um for the nose and little bits in the ears I'm gonna use this cold gray 235 now it does look quite dark so it should do the job I think sometimes you don't need black, black, black. It's going to go in with the eyes. We'll put some um, highlights in these eyes as well with the white paint pen or white gel pen, whatever you've got. Whatever you've got. So I am going to just clean my paint pen off and make sure it's coming out okay. It is. So the paint pen I'm using is this Soonis acrylic paint pens. I'll link those in the description as well. And I'm just going to put the tiniest dot. The tiniest little dots. I'm not even sure I like that. It's come out a bit. It's because it's super tiny. Super tiny. But yeah, it'll do. It'll do. <laughs> so next we're going to do the seals. So when I've looked at a reference of seals, let's bring which seals should we do first. Let's do this guy here. When I've looked at references of seals, they are pretty much greys with, you know, light grey, darkish grey sort of thing. So I'm going to go in with a base first all over the seal with the cold grey 233. 
and I'm gonna go over the little, what do you call them, fins on seals. <laughs> but I'm gonna leave, I'm not gonna go in. See the bellies? I'm not gonna go in on the belly. Just gonna go in all over the top. I'm gonna leave a little highlight on the cheek as well. So the belly and the cheek, I'm not gonna go over with this pencil. And then I'm going to go back in with this again. This is the Cold Grey 235. And I'm going to darken up lots of areas. So just mainly going over the bits of grey scale. Because they are, if you look at a reference picture, they're like... They're a bit patchy seals, like they've got these darker spots and lighter spots. So I'm just randomly going in with some hard pressure in certain areas and then softening it off. Going in with some medium pressure and some lighter pressure. They seem to be a lot darker on top of the bodies than underneath. That's why I've left this bit white at the minute. go. I'm gonna put a tiny bit, oh this little, this other thin what I've missed out here. I was just saying I'm gonna put a tiny little bit right in the corner here and then leave that white bit there. So now I am gonna go back in with a white pencil 101 and I'm gonna go over his belly which I said I was leaving out and his cheek and just blend it blend it all in sometimes I prefer to use a sort of blender pencil to burnish and blend colours together but when you want to sort of keep some more white areas it's nice to go in with the white so that's one seal done and I'm just going to um, time lapse the other seals and then we'll come back to doing the background. So see you soon. So now we've done all the sea um, seals, I nearly said sea lions then, seals, and we've done the polar bears. So now we've just got the water. We've got the water and we've got the top bit here, which I'm going to call snowy mountains. <laughs> so I'm going to start off with 
the water i'm going to get some spare sheets of paper to put behind my page just because we are going to start going in with a hair pressure and i need to pad it out so that we're not putting indentations onto the next page because i would not want to do that so let me find my paper so i've got quite a bit of paper to pad out with here i'm gonna pop it under there or should I pop it that way for now? Pop it that way for now, then we've got more area covered up here. We've got all the water covered there now. So the colours that I'm going to use, hopefully I can remember what colours I used. Where's the scrap piece of paper that I swatched onto? You'll have to ignore this paper, I've done all sorts with it. But I was looking at this colour blend here. So the darkness, the darkest colour is going to be Indanthrene blue, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but Indanthrene blue 247. This one here. Then we're going to go in with a cobalt blue greenish, which is 144. Then I've got ultramarine 120. Then we've got a little bit of sky blue 146. And then we need to tie in because we're starting off with the darkest colour at the bottom and then we're going lighter and lighter till we get to the top. So we're going to need this colour that we put down for these mountains here. We're going to need the cobalt green 156 um, just to blend all the water into the same colour at the top. So this is more pencils than i normally use for something like this but i thought it looks like a really nice transition and we've got some nice depth um so hopefully it'll be okay guys it'll be okay so i am going to start off with my darkest color and it's probably going to take quite a lot of layers for this guys quite a lot of layers so we shall see so in Dantheme Blue 247, are we zoomed in and off here? Should we come in a bit closer? Come in a bit closer and hopefully that's all right. Now I'm not bothered about going over the fish. I think this blue will probably co cover those fish up. Um, yeah, but if you want to keep the fish in and work around it, that's entirely up to you, but I'm not I'm not for that at the minute. I'm not about that at the minute. So just to start off with, just to get rid of that white of the paper, I am just going in with a light pressure to start with. I'm not gonna go in full force yet, even though I do want this to be really dark. At the bottom, I'm not gonna go full force yet. I'm just gonna map out where I want this color to go up to. And I'm thinking, possibly around with this colour, possibly around there, like just under that seal's fin, possibly, and then carrying it along here. So I'm just going to put that guideline in there. So I'm just going to put a light layer of this in, all the way up. I was contemplating doing watercolour background, but as you know, I really messed one of my pages up doing a watercolour background recently and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to stick to pencils on this page, <laughs> just because, just because, it can be an old pencil page, this one. So there we go. this side I'm hoping that the colours I've chose um, make sure that my polar bear doesn't get lost 
I obviously want it to look like it's in the water. So similar kinds of colours, but I don't want it to blend in too much. So that's why I'm going really dark at the bottom. And one of the reasons I'm going really dark at the bottom... Oh, does anyone else just hate the edge of the pages when you're trying to get the colour to the edge of the page? Pet eight! <laughs> That's what watercolour's good for. Avoiding this little awkward bit. Awkwardness. Right, I'm just going to soften this top bit up a bit. And go in with an even lighter pressure a bit further up because we're going to need to put that next colour down and it's going to need to blend. So we're going to make this bit lighter. And then I'm going to come in with that cobalt blue greenish 144 and I'm going to start here where we've started to soften it. So light pressure again. This is all going to be dark and burnished when I've done. I'm just sort of mapping out where I want the colours. And getting a light layer down first. I don't want to go in full force. So if we say up to there very very lightly. I'll just make my guideline there. You know what helps to really bring the colours together as well? The Caran Dash Full Blender is going to be perfect for doing this. There. So now I'm going to bring this colour a bit further up, say up to here. Really light. Really light. Barely anything. Barely anything. And then we're going to bring in Ultramarine 120. So we're going to start where we've put that light layer in. Drag it down a little bit. And again on the other side. Then we're going to bring in Sky Blue 146. So I'm going to start over some of this, what we've just put down. And then I'm going to drag it up. Leaving just a sort of, is that a centimetre? Leaving sort of a centimetre gap. At the top. Oh, the edge of this page might end up a bit... Just going to erase that little bit where it's caught it a bit harshly. Soft pastels would work well doing this as well. If you had a range of colours or you could mix your own colours. Darker to lighter. You might get a nice blend on that with soft pastels. There we go, then I'm going to bring in the Cobalt Green 156. And I've just realised you couldn't see up here. <laughs> to apologise. I'm always doing that. I'm always doing it. So I'm just 
just gonna bring that colour. Again on this side, So now I'm going to darken up some of these colours and I'm going to start from the top. So I'm going in with an medium pressure now with this. And then going in with the sky blue 146. the colours so you can bring some of the sky blue up into where you've just been with the cobalt green and even bring it down into the next shade so we've got a nicer transition I was getting the edge of the paper there where I've got this underneath I don't like that I'm gonna erase that guys I'm probably gonna erase that bit I'll do it now. I'll do that now. Ignore me for a second. You keep doing your gorgeous work and I'll recolour that in. <laughs> I don't like that harsh line. It's because I had this paper. It was the edge of the paper underneath here, catching it. So we've got rid of that now. Let's just get this colour back in nicely. Continuing with the sky blue 146 still. I'm gonna come over here. There's a fly. Did you see that fly on the camera? Did it get some camera action then that fly? It's that blue bottle. I've not managed to get rid of it yet. remove this paper it's doing more harm than good I think sometimes it just works out like that <laughs> so next I'm going to go in with ultramarine 120 I'm going to bring this colour in here a little bit And again on this side. Ah, oh, the edge of the book. Pet eight. 
pencil just keeps getting stuck, doesn't it? Now I'm going to go in with the Cobalt Blue Greenish 144, so it's going to start getting really a lot darker now. medium pressure here and I am going to drag it all down to the bottom this is going to create even more depth when we come to putting our darkest colour down when we've got these undertones already underneath it it's a very ugly stage to colour in sometimes isn't there very ugly stage go to this side Of the paper here guys let's try and put my finger there so it blocks it catching the edge of the page sometimes if it bumps your finger just before the edge it's a bit better that little trick seems to work <laughs> now i'm gonna go in with the darkest one which is in three in blue i hope i'm pronouncing that right in three in blue 247 I'm going to start at the bottom with the darkest pressure, the hardest pressure. Hopefully get right to the bottom. See the bumpy finger trick? I don't think it works that way. <laughs> Try and get right to the edge. I don't want that white line at the bottom, do we? Hopefully when I go in with a blender it'll sort that right out anyway. Yeah, so medium to hard pressure at this bottom bit now. This is going to be your darkest. Darkest, darkest bit. And then as you're moving up, go into a medium pressure and then into a light pressure and it should just blend nicely. fiddle with it as well this is one of them things where you can just layer and layer and layer up that's one thing these um you know these pencils are good for layering let's just get into there with this darkness that's a bit of a shadow going on isn't there there to the other side so really hard pressure at the bottom 
Oops. Try your best to get right to the edge. It's a bit tricky at times. So I'm liking the way this is looking so far. When I took a step back and I've had a look and I can sort of see it all coming together bit by bit. <laughs> it's a labour of love when you do any sort of pencil background, I think. I do normally take the easy option and do a soft pastel or a watercolour or anything that isn't full pencil background. <laughs> So, got the darkest bits in now. Just gonna pull that up a bit. And then when we've pulled it up about to here, then we're gonna soften, go into a medium and light pressure then. But if you'd have left the fish out and tried to do this around all them fish, it would have made your life really hard you know, to try and dodge all the fish. So a gel pen will work over the top if you want to do some sort of metallic um, gel pen work over those. Or if you just want to leave them blended into the background. Um, I've not quite decided what I'm going to do yet. But right, I'm going into that medium pressure now. Just trying to blend it up. Medium to light pressure now at the top. Let's just try and get rid of that harsh line there. Just gonna go back in with the cobalt green, cobalt blue greenish 144 just to try and blend some of this in a bit better. And on this side as well. I'm going to go in with the Sky Blue 146. Let me pull you up a bit so we don't end up off camera again. I'm going to try pods being a bit funny, guys. There we go. So with the Sky Blue now, I'm just going to go over all of it. So I'm going to bring it down here. Even in the darkest bits, I'm just going to go over it just to build it up and build it up. So we've got lots of colour going on just before we use the blender. And on the other side. You won't even think you see it, but it's just filling in a bit more of that white space. There's 
making sure that we've got enough pencil down so that when we do come in with a blender it is all just gonna be nicely blended let's put my finger there on the end There we go, and if you take a step back and just look at it, if you feel like you want to go in with any more darkness anywhere, fix it however you want before going in with a blender pencil. Because um, once you've burnished it, you can't really do much then. So this is the Caran Dash full blender that I'm using today. I just feel like it's works really well on something like this on blending a page like this and you'll see when I start off here at the bottom you can see the pencil getting darker and deeper and richer can you see that see the difference there how nice that blend is So it's good to have a duster brush with these blending pencils because they do leave quite a lot of wax residue on your page. Um, so if you don't like that, <laughs> I don't like it being on the page. That's why I've got this to waft it away almost immediately because it can get irritating. But it just works beautiful for something like this. I will link these blender pencils and this brush in the description of the video as well. If anyone's interested in any of the supplies that I use, I do try and link them in all my videos. Um, if I don't have something linked, it's because I can't find it anymore or it's out of stock or something like that. So we're just going to blend all the way up to the top and hopefully we'll have some really nice tones coming through. When we do this, just being careful of our little seal space, I want to get blue on him, if I can help it. <laughs> Does anybody else think um, Kirby Wazans should... Um, have a um, Diamond Dark Club diamond painting made. Because I do. <laughs> How good would this be as a diamond painting? This illustration. For anybody else that diamond paints. Get some really nice colours here now. It's testing on the little old hand, all this hard pressure. But it's a lot easier using this one than, say, I don't know, some people blend with white, don't they? If you was to try and blend with a Faber Castell Polychromos pencil, I imagine that would hurt your hand more than this little blender pencil. You just see how putting that little bit of colour down here is sort of blended it, blended it nicely. I'm going to move over to the other side now. So we're going to move over to this side. Starting at the bottom again. Being careful of our little seals. Oh, 
If you prefer to blend light to dark, you can blend light to dark. It doesn't really, to me, it doesn't really matter. But some people like to go light to dark and then they're not dragging the dark colours through the light colours. It just depends what effect you want. But on this page, I don't think it particularly matters. I'm really glad I went with the pencil background now over the watercolour because this is looking really, really nice. Be mindful of my little sealed space. <laughs> Don't want to get it on my sealed space. I think I probably need to give this pencil another sharpen, so bear with me. I do just sharpen it in my regular Helix sharpener. It works absolutely fine. Oops. It's fine. Put my finger there, try and stop it at the edges. Bending the page up, aren't I? Just gonna have to go this way on the edges, I think. Just on the very edge. The edges of my pet eight, guys. Even more so than the spine. The spine didn't bother me over on this side, it was easy. It's just the edges of the paper when you're doing it with pencil, it's a nightmare. If you put your finger there so that the pencil bounces off your finger and not the edge of the page, it's, <laughs> it works a bit better. Let's blend it into the top, last little bit. And the home stretch, guys, home stretch. And there we go. Oh, I love how that looks. I love how that looks, that's gorgeous. Now, as you heard me mention before, the top bit I want to do is like a snowy mountain. So, the undertone of snow, I think, is sort of... I want to go for a pale blue because I want to think in my head that the snowy mountains are getting a hint of blue from the reflection of the water below, um, sort of thing. So, I'm going to go for that. So, I'm going to put in a sort of pale blue and then um either not an ivory then i probably will bring some white into the mix and then at the end as you know i am using some acrylic paint um to put some snow onto the tops of the mountain here so i probably well i might bring some acrylic paint into the mountains i'm unsure i'm not very good with snow but we're going to give it a go so let's bring them into these mountains mountain tops so i'm going to use this color so this is a color we've used before look at all that pencil dust on me um sky blue 146 and we're going to go in with this color really really light layer really really light layer just so the snowy mountains have just got a hint just a hint of something below and of course you only want to use light pressure because when we're going with a blender pencil it will deepen it up a bit because as you know those full blenders make colours pop they just do 
make everything more vibrant. So if you want this to be subtle, you really need to have a light hand if you're using the Karen Dash Blender. The dreaded edge of the paper again. Right, so these bits here, I'm going to put the blue over those as well. We can afford a bit of a harder pressure over these bits, so go in with a medium pressure on these bits here. bit more really light pressure on the snowy bits just to have a little bit I'm gonna go in on this side medium pressure over these lines I think it's there to create some movement these lines here but like I say, I'm not. I think people interpret the page differently. I just saw snowy mountains, so we're gonna go with that. We're gonna go with that. I'm just randomly picking out some areas to put some light pressure of blue. Just really random. And then I'm going to go in with the white and we'll see what this does. So white 101, you'll probably not see much happening here, but I'm going to put it in the. Is there something on my page there? Something there, what is it? Oh, it's a diamond painting drill. <laughs> Look at that, under the page causing me problems. <laughs> you can tell a bit diamond painting on here, can't you? So I'm just going over the top of these lines where I put the blue and going over the top with the white. And now I'm going to use my Caran Dash Full Blender again, but I'm going to clean it off because we've been blending that sea, all that ocean, we want to get any of that pigment off. And then I'm just going to use it all over. Where we've we been. I have to be careful, it's picking up a bit of pigment from the, you know, the ink. It's sort of dragging the ink. I've never had that problem in these books before, but I'm just going to erase that little bit. I haven't had that problem before in these books. It's doing it quite a lot on this page. So this will be very, very subtle. You will barely notice it. You'll barely notice it, but that's the effects that that I'm going for. And then the acrylic paint will bring everything together at the end. You can see it's dragged that ink as well here a little bit. I'm going to 
anybody else's boot doing that? If you're colouring along, is yours doing this? Is your ink running? Getting in between the polar bear's legs. There we go. So I'm going to pop away and going to go and get my acrylic paint, and I'll be right back welcome back again so the acrylic paint that i'm using is the decoise americana this one is the snow titanium white and i've just popped a bit onto a scrap piece of paper and i'm going to be using this sponge now these sponges you can get relatively cheap on amazon or you can pick them up from i don't know the market you can get them from the makeup stand on the market anywhere really i think you can get them in the pound shops they are just a little sponge and I'm just going to dip into the paint and I am just going to go over these Um, I don't like how that inks run so I'm going to go over with some of the paint <laughs> so let's pull you in a bit more pull you in a bit more and I'm just going to dab everywhere and we're going to cover that up I don't like it guys I don't like it I think it'll look a lot nicer with this on be mindful of that next page I could have done with some washi tape there I think I'm just gonna cover the area I can get to there there we go it's gonna take a couple of layers of this as well to cover that up it's going to take a few layers you'll have to let it dry and then come back with another layer so i'm going to do the same thing over here just dabbing it on trying to follow the same sort of lines there we go so i'm going to let that dry and come back with another layer but in the meantime I am going to put some on top of this rock. Now I'm not going to use the sponge because we're not going to have the um, the um, sort of delicateness that I want there. So let me find a paintbrush. These are just my cheapy paintbrushes. This is a really small one. It's a number two. And I'm just going to dip into that and I'm going to paint the top section white. So again, I might want a second layer of this, but we'll see. Just going to go over this black line that I missed out over here. let that dry and then I'll go back in to make it even more opaque I'm gonna put a little tiny bit 
just dotted on the top of these mountains and this one just so it looks like a bit of snowfall at the top And again over here on these ones. There we go. Now I'm going to go back over this bit because it should be okay now it dries really really fast acrylic paint that's why I like it <laughs> I love working with it because it dries fast it's not like watercolor where you have to go off and stop filming for half an hour to let it dry before coming back There we go and now I'm going to go in with my second layer over these little bits that I don't like <laughs> so we're going to go back in with a sponge now back in with a sponge over these sections and then this side See how it's so subtle, the background. It's sort of, you can tell it's an off-white in the background. Because you can tell that this is standing out, this white, white paint is standing out. But it's very subtle. And that's what I wanted. Subtle, subtleness. I'm just going to pop a little bit more paint onto my piece of paper here at the side of me. I'm going to be covered in paint by the end of this though, covered. Right, I'm going to be careful in this corner again because I don't want to get it on the opposite page. I'm just going to try and get it in there. So it almost looks like snow in the distance, doesn't it? Pop a bit here. Looks like they're walking on it. Look at that. And a little bit why I've got the sponge, I'm going to put a little bit with what's left on now. I'm not going to re dip into the paint, but with what's left on here, I'm going to put a little bit on the top of the water so it looks like a sort of a bit of waves. So you can see there's only a bit minimal amount of paint left on this sponge. Let's try and come in this way so that you can see a bit better. It just looks like the sort of the waves have crashed up a bit, doesn't it? On there. And I think that's where I want to be with that. I think I'm happy with that guys so let me pop this out of the way and then we'll zoom out and then we can see the bigger picture and see if we want to put any other actually you know what we've not done we've not done the polar bear's eyes and the nose so we're going to use the cold grey 235 I completely forgot about that cold grey 235 and just darken those in and then we're going to put the highlight in with my paint pen and we'll just darken up the nose. And 
Very simple, but I always forget something. <laughs> I always forget something, guys. Right, so using my paint pen again, I'm just going to give him a little highlight. Let me try and get this. It's the wrong pen. That's not the pen I wanted. Where's my paint pen gone? That's me. I had to use a gel pen. Bear with me. Oh, it's here. I'll put it in the other way. Just squeaking as well. Just put him some little highlights in and a little bit on his nose. A little bit of something on his nose. <laughs> but there we go and I'm going to leave it at that so let's come out let's zoom me out see all the chaos on my desk now I'm folding but yeah that's the colour along complete I'm rather surprised that I've got that done in two parts if I'm honest because I thought it was going to be three or four parts <laughs> considering it was a pencil background but it's not too bad I really like how that's turned out I love the snowy background it's really subtle really really subtle I love it so i hope you enjoyed it i hope if you do color along you will tag me in your instagram posts when you post them on there or email me your finished page please do hit the thumbs up subscribe if you're new and i'll see you in the next one bye everyone